I want to introduce this film from the standpoint of a soldier who was taught to use nuclear weapons and is a diplomat who worked hard for their elimination. As a 21-year-old second lieutenant assigned to Germany, one of my first missions was to guard an atomic cannon, a huge machine that ran around Germany on a couple of trucks. And its mission was to shoot nuclear weapons at the Russian armed forces if they ever came across the border in the vicinity of the Fulda Gap. A few years later, as a captain, I was taught how to actually employ this weapon and other similar weapons. I was taught how to determine what the blast effects of such weapons would be, how many people would be killed by the blast, how many buildings would be knocked down. I was also taught what the thermal effects would be, how things would be burned, how people would be burned. I was taught about the radiation effects, and I was taught to plot the fallout pattern that would come from the use of nuclear weapons as the dirt was thrown up into the sky and spread out across the landscape. Many years later, as a Corps commander back in Germany, commanding 75,000 troops, my mission was to stop the waves of Russian forces that would be coming through the Fulda Gap. And in those days, we thought we could only stop the first or second wave before we would have to call for nuclear weapons to stop the rest of the Russian armies coming through. And I would work with my staff to look at the effects of using nuclear weapons in West Germany on our side of the border against Russian armies that had come through. And we thought about what the Russians would do in return, and we wondered whether or not it could be stopped at that level or whether it would escalate all the way up to strategic thermonuclear exchange with all that would mean for the existence of the world, all the millions of people who would be killed by such an exchange. It was an existential issue, and the more I got into nuclear weapons, the more I realized these weapons must never be used. And then I became chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in 1989, and I had 28,000 nuclear weapons under my supervision. And every morning, I looked to see where the Russian submarines were off the coast of Virginia and how far away those missiles were from Washington. And I kept track of where the Russian missiles were in Europe and in the Soviet Union. And the one thing I convinced myself of after all these years of exposure to the use of nuclear weapons is that they were useless. They could not be used. So you can have deterrence with an even lower number of weapons. Well, then why stop there? Why not continue on? Why not get rid of them altogether? The real threat now is not from states that understand that you cannot use these weapons without inviting suicidal response, but terrorists who do not care about suicidal response, terrorists who are prepared to commit suicide themselves. And so it is important at this point in our international history that we all come together behind this initiative that you're going to hear about to make sure that we start a process that will lead to the reduction in the number of nuclear weapons that exist in the arsenals of the world now that will deter other nations from moving forward on nuclear weapons programs but above all will capture and contain the elements that are out there the devices that are out there the technology that is out there the uranium and plutonium sources that may be out there that a terrorist could get his hands on to try to develop a rudimentary or a real nuclear weapon. This is a noble cause, and what you're about to hear are four men who have worked in this field for most of their adult lives, who have given their lives to protecting our nation, but at the same time believe that this is the moment when we have to move forward and all of us come together to reduce the number of nuclear weapons and then eliminate them from the face of the earth. The film features four of the most distinguished Americans I have ever had the privilege of serving with, four men who I can call my dear friends. Former Secretaries of State Henry Kissinger and George Shultz, former Secretary of Defense Bill Perry, and former Senator Sam Nunn. I think you will find this film interesting, and I hope it will motivate you to support this effort. Thank you.
It is not a theoretical question. The 9-11 Commission reports Al-Qaeda has been trying to acquire or make a nuclear weapon for a decade. Could they do that? Highly enriched uranium and plutonium, the raw material to make a bomb, is scattered over about 40 countries, sometimes under very lax security. According to the 9-11 Commission, once terrorists get these materials, a trained nuclear engineer could fashion a bomb using commercially available materials and machine tools. The terrorists who want that material don't need much of it, and there are lots of places where they could steal it. Four men who helped navigate the Cold War, four Cold Warriors, know all too well the dangers we face. Former Secretary of State George Shultz knows firsthand the devastation nuclear weapons can cause from his World War II service in the Pacific. Former National Security Advisor and Secretary of State Henry Kissinger lived daily with the threat of a nuclear exchange while in the White House. Former Secretary of Defense William Perry knows all too well how close the world has come to nuclear annihilation. And former Senator Sam Nunn has devoted much of his career to preserving this nation's security while reducing the danger of a nuclear exchange. Working with the Nuclear Threat Initiative, co-chaired by Ted Turner and Sam Nunn, and the Hoover Institution, the four have formed the Nuclear Security Project a nonpartisan effort to link the vision of a world free of nuclear weapons with urgent steps to be taken to reduce nuclear risks. They first proposed their vision and the essential steps in a Wall Street Journal article that sent shockwaves through the global foreign policy establishment. Their message was a simple one. If we want other nations of the world to join us in a tough approach to preventing nuclear terrorism and the continued spread of nuclear weapons, we must be willing to recommit to the vision of a world without nuclear weapons and to lead the world in taking concrete actions to reduce nuclear dangers. The actions, a series of urgent and achievable steps, are an agenda for change for a more secure and safer world. The four recognize this bold agenda cannot be accomplished by the United States alone. These goals must become a joint enterprise among nations to make urgently needed progress to reduce the risks now posed by nuclear weapons and materials. But progress must be made, a simple truth they know from personal experience. George Schultz was a young Marine on a ship headed for the invasion of Japan when he first heard of nuclear weapons. And we had hardly left our harbor when news came to the ship that something called an atomic bomb had been dropped. And we asked around, nobody had a clue about what it was. Our ship lumbered along, and then we heard another atomic bomb had been dropped. By the time we got to port, the war was over. Uh, we couldn't help but make the association that these two atomic bombs may have saved our lives. My thinking about these weapons evolved. At first, what you're trying to do is understand what is this anyway. And then you see pictures of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And you begin to see the horror and the inhumanity of them. For me, the most searing question was what I would actually